uh, Tanzania Data Lab, uh, we are part and parcel of the fourth industrial revolution, as well as the data revolution around the world. So we really embrace and support everything to do with data. Uh, the value of data, uh, data science for social good, and all the 360 degrees, you know, uh, activities related to data, community, uh, education, learning, you, may, you name it, uh, we, that's what we do. But um, uh, in the last two years, uh, we had an acceleration program, the Tanzania Data Lab Acceleration Program. Uh, we accelerated 10 different uh, startups. Uh, and then from those 10 different startups, really, uh, Examnet was, was one of them and came as one of the best. I think we had the best six, but Examnet was uh, one of the best six. Uh, and uh, today we are here, you know, to really uh, launch the partnership between uh, Finnish Future, which is a Finnish um, um, organization, and Examnet, which is a Tanzania organization. Now, why Tanzania Data Lab is doing this? Uh, we are part and parcel of the success of uh, Examnet. We are custodians and we are partners uh, with uh, Examnet. And currently now, we are extending our partnership to Finnish Future. So uh, it's not my day to, to say a lot, to talk a lot, but it's a day for, for Moses, uh, Moses uh, Baga, as well as uh, Mr. Peter here for Finnish Future, the co-founder and, and the chairman, uh, to, to really, you know, probably, I would say, to really explain more about uh, this partnership and really uh, to connect with the Tanzanian community. Karib uh, Sana Moses. A bit of background of how we met Finest Future. Um, ni last year, we had the opportunity to attend Slush in November. Uh, Peter, being co-founder of Slush, um, we had the opportunity to attend Slush. Tukabalishana mawazo na at the end of the day tuligundua kwamba wote wawili kuna tuna sort of uh, ambition ya kubadilisha educational system in Tanzania. Kwa hiyo kwa ile meeting tuliyofanya pia tuligundua kwamba Peter anafanya project ya Finance Future ambayo ina aim kuchukua wanafunzi from all over the world na kuwapeleka kuwasomesha Finland. Kwa hiyo, us being an educational stakeholder and we are trying to transform educational system in Tanzania, basi tukaona kwamba we should um, advance into Africa mana back then walikuwa bado hawajafika Africa. Kwa hiyo, sisi hapa ndo our, uh, we are the local representatives na tunatafutia wanafunzi from all over Tanzania and other parts of Africa ambao tunasaidia kuwa on board kwenye program kuwa peleka um, Finland. Uh, who's through the program in depth? I think I'll leave that to Peter. So, welcome, Peter. Yeah, I'm Peter Westerbacher and uh, co founder of uh, Finest Future. And uh, yeah, I've been an entrepreneur uh, pretty much like all my life. I've uh, been involved with uh, many things. So, uh, most mentioned, I'm one of the founders of uh, Slush, which is the biggest and uh, best startup event on the planet. So, uh, uh, much bigger than anything in, say, Silicon Valley or China or, or wherever. And uh, yeah, I also used to be uh, the Mighty Eagle at the Rovio, the makers of Angry Birds uh, that some of you might have played or seen the movie. So I was there for many years. We made that uh, the fastest growing consumer brand uh, ever. Uh, and I've also always been uh, uh, very focused on education. So uh, if you look at uh, Finland, uh, you know, a small, small country up there in, in Northern Europe, uh, uh, only five and a half million people, but we created a few things. Uh, so uh, many have heard of Nokia, many have heard of Angry Birds, but we also created Linux, MySQL, uh, so many of the technologies that power, you know, the internet. Uh, so not too bad for uh, a nation of only very few people. I mean, less people probably than we have just here in, in Dar es Salaam. Uh, and I think that one of the reasons uh, for the success uh, and, and really kind of like the foundation, uh, it is that... Uh, in Finland, we don't have any natural resources. Okay, we have a bit of forest, but that's it. Uh, so very early on, we decided that we need to invest in the most important resource, the people. And uh, decided to offer fantastic education for all, not just a few. And I think that this uh, foundation of education is really what has enabled Finland to become actually a very prosperous uh, country. 
and uh, also uh, kind of like the source of many of these innovations and this uh, success that uh, I mentioned. Uh, also, then if you look at uh, Finland today, and actually I always talk about the finest Bay Area. Uh, so that is Finland, Estonia, Sweden. It's the most successful uh, region on the planet when it comes to startup creation. You know, number of startups per capita, number of unicorns per capita. So unicorns, companies, unlisted companies, you know, startups uh, worth more than a billion dollars. Uh, so we have the highest number per capita. Uh, in the finest Bay Area. We also, uh, I think, uh, if you look at maybe uh, the most like telling indicator, and uh, you know, we're big fans of data here. Uh, so uh, if you look at the amount of venture capital invested into startups in the finest Bay Area per capita, uh, it's uh, by far the most anywhere. Actually, OECD numbers last year, uh, Estonia was number one, Finland was number two, Lithu Lithuania was number three, Sweden was number four, and then like our American friends were number five, which is, you know, okay, but not kind of like a middle or anything. Uh, so uh, that indicates that it's, uh, uh, you know, people put, you know, the money where they expect the biggest returns and they expect the startups, uh, you know, in the finest Bay Area to do very, very well. And that's, of course, why investors are pouring all the money into the startups uh, in the finest Bay Area. Uh, but then uh, with that uh, success, of course, comes also many challenges. So one big challenge is that we have a massive shortage of talent. I mean, if you look at Finland alone, uh, because of the success of the startups and many of the companies in the technology industry, we need just for the technology industry 13,000 new people every year. So next, you know, 10 years, 130,000 new jobs in technology industry. And this is just Finland. I mean, similar situation in Estonia, in Sweden. So a lot of people, and I mean, coming from games industry, in Finland we are currently hiring 1,500 people into the games companies, because it's not just Robio, but we have Supercell. You know, some of you might have played like Clash of Clans and, you know, uh, Heyday and some of these. We have small giant games. So we have actually a uh, very, very big, fast-growing games industry. And we could probably hire 3,000 people every year if we could just find the talent. And also, uh, uh, it's a very global uh, industry, global business. When I was at Rovio, you know, working on Angry Birds, we had 47 different nationalities. So uh, very, very international. And uh, that uh, brings us to finest future. So we uh, decided that we need to uh, address uh, this challenge, uh, challenge of talent, uh, you know, uh, shortage. Uh, uh, we have already many years ago started uh, attracting more international students to our universities in Finland. So we have many great universities uh, there. But uh, one thing that we are lacking in is actually the number of international students in our secondary education, in our high schools, in our vocational schools. And at the same time, every year in Finland, 20,000, over 20,000 starting uh, seats, starting slots at our secondary, you know, schools, high schools and vocation schools are unfilled. And uh, comparing that to, you know, uh, places like the US, Canada, Australia, UK, uh, where you have hundreds of thousands uh, of young people who go there already for high school or for vocational school. Uh, so we at Finest Future decided to address this. So uh, about two years ago we started uh, uh, the program in which we teach Finnish language to local young people in Vietnam and Uzbekistan. So that's where we started. And uh, then uh, after learning the language uh, for half a year, you reach what we call the B1.1 level of uh, Finnish. Then you can apply to high school or vocational school in Finland. And then you get accepted. Then you continue for uh, you know, or you take your acceptance letter to the Finnish embassy and you get your residency permit. But in the meanwhile, you continue your uh, uh, Finnish language studies and, and also learning about life and studies in Finland. And then uh, completing the program after 12 months, you can move to Finland. And then you enjoy tuition-free high school, tuition-free vocational school. And also, if you decide to do so, you can stay for tuition-free um, university studies, all the way, you know, through master's and PhD, if you want to do that, all tuition free. So the value proposition is that you learn the language. And the good news is Finnish is very easy to learn. 
so uh, you can easily in half a year you know pick up uh, uh, good enough English for uh, for high school and uh, yeah learning the language then gives you access to uh, free tuition free uh, uh, studies in Finland high school vocational university all the way through to PhD so that is what finest future is doing and as I mentioned we started with uh, with two countries and now we have expanded to 20 and the reason why we are here we have already started uh, the program here in Tanzania as well so we have now a handful of students who are learning Finnish including Moses here and uh, and, and uh, then uh, also uh, looking at uh, doing this uh, across Africa so uh, we have now mainly been focusing on uh, on doing the finest future program in Asia in the Americas so we have started in the US in uh, Canada uh, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Chile, and then we're all over Asia, Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Myanmar, Iran, many places. Uh, but we think that there is uh, a lot of opportunity and especially, of course, I don't need to tell you guys, but uh, Tanzania has uh, a very young uh, population, very talented young population, I should say. Uh, so uh, we think that there is a lot of opportunity to work together. Uh, in education and starting with this uh, student mobility program so again uh, giving access to uh, the fantastic high schools that we have in Finland uh, also for young people here in, in uh, Tanzania and as I said we're not doing this just because uh, you know we're nice people but we are doing this because we actually need the talent so we can offer fantastic education and we can offer fantastic jobs so I think that that is uh, uh, important and maybe, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with uh, Finland, uh, Finland also, uh, we have a long history of working together with Tanzania. So uh, for not just like a few years, but tens and I think probably over a hundred years. Uh, so uh, that is uh, uh, one thing. But also, uh, uh, besides uh, being known for having, uh, you know, uh, one of the best educational systems on the planet, uh, I mentioned already that we have had a lot of success in our startup and our like entrepreneurial ecosystem and uh, with all of that uh, Finland has also been ranked uh, the happiest nation on the planet five years running according to the UN uh, so I think that uh, you know the education the jobs and all that leads to happiness and uh, that is also I think something that uh, uh, you know if I ask parents and I'm a parent myself you know what do you want for your children of course you want you know, fantastic education and all of that, but, you know, in the end, it's all about happiness. You want your children to have a uh, happy life, and that is what we are very, very focused on. So when I talk to the students, uh, I was actually in Vietnam the week before last and met with many of the students who now go to high school in Finland, uh, their home there for the summer, met with their students and the parents. So when I asked the students about, uh, you know, life in Finland, what they think, uh, all of them tell me that you know it's fantastic they're super super happy because they now have time not just for school but for life and for friends so many of them have picked up you know they started skateboarding they started playing the guitar the piano skiing skating walking in the forest you know whatever they're into uh, so they're very very happy and they're also performing very well very well at school so I mean that of course helps uh, and then when I talked to the parents, uh, I think uh, it was also great to hear that they told me that they have never seen uh, their kids so happy before. So uh, they've been very, very, you know, happy. Uh, so happiness clearly is the theme here. Happy with, uh, you know, having their, uh, their kids go to high school and vocational school uh, in Finland. So um, that is what uh, Finest Future, you know, is all about what we are doing. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy, of course, to be here in Tanzania. I was actually here last time uh, in 2014 together with our then uh, Prime Minister Jyrki Katainen. And, uh, and I remember we had a lot of discussions. I talked to your Minister of Education back then. And, uh, and I think that we have a big opportunity to work together in education. And if I look eight years back, I don't think that we have made that much progress here when it comes to education and I think that we, we need to do more and we met with the Finnish ambassador to Tanzania uh, Rita uh, and her team today and I think that we all agreed that uh, we can do a lot more uh, together and actually one story that I, I want to share uh, so I mentioned you know the finest Bay Area so Finland, Estonia, Sweden 
uh, Estonia actually uh, regained its uh, independence after many years of Soviet uh, oppression. Uh, so when the Soviet Union collapsed, Estonia regained its independence in the early 90s. And uh, what happened was that, uh, you know, they started from scratch. Uh, so uh, uh, life, you know, in the Soviet times was pretty miserable. Uh, but then um, uh, Kari Niin is the, a professor from uh, University of Turku. Uh, he uh, uh, is now retired, but in the early 90s, he was uh, in charge of the teacher training and the, like educational or pedagogical department at uh, University of Turku. So he went to Estonia. And then he worked at the Tartu University together with the rector, the president of Tartu University. And they redefined the whole uh, teacher education and like the educational system for Estonia. And now if you look at Estonia 30 years later, they are way up there when it comes to educational system and rankings. In some areas they have even, you know, bypassed Finland. And I think that uh, this is an example of what we can achieve when we work together. So Finland and Estonia, we work very closely together with a big focus on education. And if we can do that in Estonia, of course, Estonia is a very small country. Tanzania, not so small. But I think that uh, there is kind of like no excuse not to do it. And I think that this is something that we would love to do. Also part of the Finance Future program. Uh, really focus on uh, working together, focusing on transforming the educational system uh, here in Tanzania. Uh, so uh, that's something that I'm like personally very focused on and very excited about. So uh, a lot of things we can do together. We're starting with the Finest Future High School and Finest Future Vocational School. But that is just what I would say a good start. A big, big focus uh, for Finland as a nation is uh, equality in all forms, also gender equality. So I'll just leave that with you, that our prime minister is uh, 30-something female. So unlike the US and some other countries that you might recognize, you don't need to be 70 years plus to run the country. You can actually be 30-something and female and run the country. So I think that is a good example and a good ambition to have. That uh, I always say that it's the job of us slightly older people to make sure that we keep the old people and the governments away. Uh, while the young people change the world. So that's basically what we're up to. So young people are the future. Um, Estonia, Finland, Sweden, um, Zote, uh, Patton, Pasil, yeah, yeah, Bay Area, Zimekwa na uhaba sana wa talents uh, kutoka nchi mbali mbali. Na wao wanatamani kwa mba kuwa nchi ambao ni multicultural na talents kutoka nje. Kwa hilo ni jambu la maana sana. I just wanted to know the number of opportunities you have for Tanzanians in your academic year and uh, have you been meeting the target or what are the strategies you have so far for it thank you yes so uh, uh right now if you look at the uh situation in finland so finland needs uh, about 60,000 immigrants every year uh we're far from that target right now uh we have more than 20,000 uh, uh starting spots that are unfilled every year in finland in our secondary education uh so that's kind of like a good start so we want to fill all the empty slots so 20,000 I don't mind if all 20,000 come from Tanzania, that's fine. But, uh, but uh, I think that we are very happy if we, uh, we now can start with, you know, like hun hundreds of students. We have now a handful. Uh, we have also uh, decided to offer kind of like a special uh, uh, offer for the first 100 students from Tanzania. So uh, we're really looking forward to reaching at least 100 now in the first year. And then uh, kind of like we can take it from there. But uh, we have... Uh, a lot of opportunities, so uh, if we would see hundreds and maybe even then thousands at some point would be uh, fantastic. But uh, I think that we will not run out of capacity like anytime soon, so there, there's a lot of opportunity. I mean, basically, uh, if you look at the partnership between uh, Examnet and Finance Future, so we're doing this uh, long term. Uh, so uh, we have uh, kind of just started, so we met at Slush last year in Helsinki and uh, now we're here. Uh, but of course, this is uh, a very long-term partnership. And always, when we talk about education, uh, it's not something that you know, like you do overnight. I mean, it takes a long time, and uh, really, for it to have an impact, uh, you need to take a long-term uh, approach. And that's what we are doing. So now, starting, but uh, then looking at uh, doing uh, the partnership, like from here until like eternity. So it, it's not like a time-based uh, partnership. So so again, looking at at doing this very, very long term.
uh, mzazi au 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 kijana kitaka ku, ku, ku join anawasiliana na kampuni ya Examnet kuna maswali tutahitaji tutapata tutahitaji ripoti ya mwanafunzi kutoka shuleni ambao anafanya kiwango cha wastani wa juu na kuendelea kwa maana ya anavyo anavyo faulu darasani hatutafuti the very best hapana wastani na kuendelea kwa sababu kule wanatafuta watu wa namna nyingi taarifa zako tuna kwenye mfumo wa finance future ukisha sajiliwa email ya kukuambia kwa nani ambayo hizo siku zinakuwa ni kila Jumanne saili interview ukishafanywa interview ukipata hiyo nafasi uta, uta, utaanza sasa kusoma lugha ya kifini kifinish kwa njia ya mtandao kwa hiyo utasoma hiyo kwa muda muda wa miezi sita Uh, waalimu wako Finland lakini utasoma hapa Jumatatu mpaka Jumatano kwa muda wa saa nzima dakika 15 jioni ukimaliza hiyo miezi sita unakuwa sasa umefikia kiwango cha kuomba nafasi kwenye shule ya high school au kwenye vocational schools kule na na, na kule uh, kuna shule nyingi ambazo zina mkataba tayari na taasisi ya finance future kwa sababu ufadhili wa kusomeshwa bure kule unatolewa na serikali ya Finland lakini unawezaje kwenda kule ni lazima usome lugha upate cheti kinachotolewa na taasisi ya finance future ndio serikali inaweza sasa ikakupa ufadhili wa kwenda kusoma kule high school na kuendelea chuo kikuu uh, high school ina maana unatakiwa uwe na wanafunzi awe na, na elimu ya, 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 ya form 4 then anaweza kaenda lakini kwa sababu kuna lugha mwanafunzi anaweza kaanza kusoma lugha tangu akiwa anasoma madarasa ya nyuma kwa mfano form 3 form 4 kwa mfano Moses sasa hivi yuko ndio ameanza form 4 lakini ameanza kusoma lugha kwa hiyo ndani ya miezi sita ata ataomba chuo kitu taratibu atapata hiyo residency permit na kule wanafunzi kuanzia miaka 15 tofauti na nchi nyingi kama Tanzania wanaruhusu watu kufanya kazi wakiwa na miaka 18 lakini kwa utaratibu huu nchi ya Finland inaruhusu wanafunzi kufanya kazi wakiwa na miaka 15 kwa hiyo pamoja na kwamba atasoma atakuwa na muda kujipatia kipato na kuendeleza maisha yake kule 